everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Miss Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference. And I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about cerebrovascular accident. Cerebrovascular accident is commonly known as stroke. What is cerebrovascular accident? What are the classification of cerebrovascular accident? What are the signs and symptoms of cerebrovascular accident? The nursing management, diagnosis, and also the complication of stroke. By the end of this class, you will be able to answer all these questions correctly. But before we go into details, kindly click on the subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we're going to be talking about stroke. What is stroke? Stroke is a condition in which neurological deficits, neurological what? Neurological deficit, neurological function deficit, neurological deficit results from decreased blood flow to a localized area of the brain. Let me try as much as possible to simplify this definition on the board. What is happening in stroke is that there's reduced blood flow to a particular area in the brain. There's obstruction of blood flow. Enough blood is not getting to a particular area of the brain. And when that particular area is not getting enough blood flow, that is going to reduce the function of that area. That is going to re reduce the ability of that area to function effectively. So stroke is what? A condition in which neurological deficits result from what? Decreased blood flow. I want you to take note of this decreased blood flow to the localized area of the brain. Then that takes us to the classification of stroke. There are generally two classifications of stroke. The first we have here is ischemic CVA, that is ischemic stroke. In ischemic CVA, there's an obstruction. There's an obstruction where there's an obstruction in an artery supplying that particular area. In ischemic CVA, there's an obstruction in the artery supplying that area of the brain. So that particular area is not getting enough what? We not get enough oxygen. We not get enough blood. We not be able to get enough nutrients because there's an obstruction in the artery. Let's take a look at this artery like a pipe. You know water flows through a pipe to a well. So when stones, when substances are obstructing this pipe, that water will not be able to flow to the well. So that is the same thing that applies in ischemic stroke. There's an obstruction in that blood water, in that blood vessel. Then that takes us to the second classification of stroke, which is hemorrhagic stroke, hemorrhagic CVA. As the name implies hemorrhagic, what is telling you, what is trying to tell you is that there is bleeding. In hemorrhagic CVA, there could be rupture of the blood vessel. And when there is rupture, it's going to lead to bleeding. And when there is bleeding, that particular area of the brain will not be getting enough blood. That particular area of the brain will not be getting enough oxygen, will not be getting enough nutrients. Take note of the fact that in ischemic CVA, there's an obstruction of the artery, there's an obstruction of the vessel. But in hemorrhagic, there's a rupture, there is bleeding. Then that takes us to the causes slash risk factor for cerebrovascular accidents. We have hemorrhage, which we already explained. We have embolus, we have thrombus, we have hypertension. Hypertension is one of the causes of cerebrovascular accidents. My experience in a clinical settings proves that hypertension, like one of the complications, one of the serious complications of hypertension is stroke. Most patients that comes up with stroke that have encountered, they actually have history of hypertension that has not been properly managed. 
Then we have obesity. You know when somebody is fat, when he's extremely fat, there's a lot of fat. Those fats can obstruct the blood vessels. So we have aging, when somebody is growing old. We have heart disease, we measured obesity. We have smoking. We have atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is an obstruction of the, um, of the artery as a result of deposition of fat. Then we have family history. When there's a history of stroke in a family, there's a possibility that a relative is going to go down with what? Stroke. Then that takes us to the pathophysiology of stroke. In terms of the pathophysiology, it is very, very easy to comprehend because the above causes, whatever the causes might be, what is happening is that there's an, interrup there's an interruption. There's an interruption of what? Blood flow. That particular area of the brain is not getting what? It's not getting enough blood. And when something like that happens, there's going to be what? Impaired brain tissue perfusion. That particular area of the brain will not be perfused, will not be having enough oxygen, will not be having enough um, nutrients. And when such happens, anaerobic respiration takes over. In our secondary school days, they told us the difference between anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration has to do with the use of oxygen. Why anaerobic respiration has to do with the use of no oxygen. So in a condition when the brain is not perfused, is not getting enough oxygen, definitely anaerobic respiration will take place and there's going to be release of lactic acid, there's going to be release of acid and the pH of that particular area will be, what? Will be altered. And when that is altered, that particular area of the brain will not be able to function properly. And that is going to lead to what? Loss of function of that particular area of the brain. That now results in the various signs and symptoms you see. In terms of the signs and symptoms of stroke, the signs and symptoms depend on the parts of the brain that is being affected. The signs and symptoms of stroke depend on the parts of the brain that is affected. The first I have here is paralysis. There are sincerely or actually different types of paralysis. We have the paraplegia. In paraplegia, the two legs are paralyzed. In hemiplegia, it's one side that has been affected. For example, the right hand and the right leg, they have been affected. The left hand and the left leg have been affected. Then we have quadruplegia. In quadruplegia, both the arms, the upper limb and the lower limbs are being what? Affected. Other signs and symptoms we have here on the board are we have the visual loss, aphasia, dysphagia, dyslexia, and headache. Then that takes us to the nursing diagnosis of stroke. In terms of the nursing diagnosis, the first one we have here is ineffective cerebral tissue perfusion related to interruption of blood flow. Remember, there's an interruption of blood flow along the blood vessels, evidenced by altered level of consciousness. There's what? Ineffective cerebral tissue perfusion. What that diagnosis simply means is that the cerebral tissues, the brain is not getting enough oxygen. So the other one we have here is impaired physical mobility related to paralysis. Evidenced by inability to purposefully move within physical environment. This individual will not be able to move properly like the way he or she ought to do. Then the other we have here is deficient self-care related to loss of muscle control. Evidenced by inability to carry out activities of daily living. In terms of the nursing diagnosis of stroke, same way the signs and symptoms depends on the part that has been affected. That is the same way the nursing diagnosis you're going to have depends on the signs and symptoms the patient portray. So we can't really say this applies for all. Depending on what the patient is portraying, depending on the clinical manifestation you are seeing on the patient, there can be impaired communication 
this patient will not be able to communicate effectively. There can be imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements. This patient will not be able to eat properly. So the signs, um, the nursing diagnosis depends on the signs and symptoms you are seeing at that very moment. Then that takes us to the diagnostic evaluation. The first we have here is MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging. It helps to evaluate leisure, location, and size. Then the other one we have is EEG, Electro encephalography. This will help to detect reduced electrical activity. Then another one we have here is carotid angiography. This will reveal narrowing. You know where something is narrowed now? This will reveal narrowing of the carotid artery. There are a lot of diagnostic evaluation that you can also that you can also use to detect um stroke and cerebrovascular accidents then also physical examination and history taking will also be a guide to what this patient you are seeing at that particular moment is portraying then in terms of management the management also depends on the signs and symptoms you are giving it also depends on the clinical manifestation the patient is portraying so, but one thing you should note is that as a nurse, I will always say, the first thing is to do carry out or do or carry out thorough assessment on your patient. Then in order of priority, your breathing pattern of the patient should be taken note of. So you have to check if the airway is cleared, if there is no secretion, if there is no mucus, if this patient is breathing properly. If this patient is not, your responsibility at that very moment should be to ensure that this patient is breathing properly, to ensure that the patient's airway is cleared. So that is what you should take note first before you start thinking of all the nursing intervention. You have to take note of the vital signs. You have to assess the neurological status of this patient. You have to assess the level of consciousness, the pulse rate, the respiration rate, the blood pressure, which are the vital signs should not be taken for granted. Physical care should also be given to your patient. Physical care should be what? Physical care should be given to your patient to ensure that this patient is physically and mentally okay. Now, in terms of the physical care, oral care, bath, bed baths, you have to wash up the mat, especially if this patient is unconscious, you have to bathe this patient, that's bed, um, bed baths, bathing the patient on the bed, you have to cut the fingernails, these are one of the response. these are one of the most important responsibilities at the particular moment. They also have nutrition. You have to take note of this patient's nutrition. If this patient is unable to eat, you have to give this patient the prescribed IV infusion. If this patient is on NG tube, you have to give this patient the food as at when due. Then you have mobility. Remember, most patients with um, stroke usually have paralysis. They will not be able to move about like they normally do. So you have to help them adjust to the normal way of life. You have to help them to rehabilitate. Re rehabilitate. Then the other is communication. Try as much as possible to ensure communication among these patients because most times they feel left alone. They feel the world has left them. So you as a nurse, you are expected to establish a good rapport between yourself and your patient and encourage them to always speak out, to verbalize their fears, to verbalize their anxiety so that they will be taken care of properly. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for being our number one fan. If you know you got value for this video, can you click on the like button, drop your comments in the comment section, and also share with a friend. Remember, knowledge makes the difference. Thanks and have a wonderful day ahead.